Hey guys, so today we're gonna be talking about how to use manual mode in your DSLR or mirrorless camera. This is gonna be a great tutorial if you just got your first camera and you don't know what to do once you turn off auto mode on it. Once you learn how to use manual settings in a camera, it, it really unlocks a lot of the creative freedom you have when you use this tool. Every setting has a little bit different tweak you can use to get a different style of photograph, a different look, a blurrier background, a sharper background. You're really gonna unlock all that potential in that camera you just got if you do set it on manual mode. So stick around, we're gonna go through a little tutorial here and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna do a live demo to show you how I actually find a correct exposure using the manual setting on my DSLR. So roll that intro and let's get right into it. dive right into how to do manual mode. So there are essentially four settings that you need to know when you're working in manual mode on your camera. And each of these settings has a little bit different effect on how you can be creative with your photograph. So I'm gonna go through each step one by one. And the, like I said, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a live demo on how I balance all those settings out to get a proper exposure. So step one, the first thing I do once I turn my camera on and I've turned it into manual mode is I adjust the shutter speed. Now, a good rule of thumb is if you're gonna be hand-holding your camera, if you're not gonna have it on a tripod or a monopod or you're not gonna set it on a desktop, is to actually just start with 1 200th of a second. This is usually a good rule of thumb because if you're holding your camera, you might get a little bit of camera shake or your subject or the thing you're photographing, whether it's food or a landscape, might get a little bit shaky if you're under 200th of a second. Now, like all rules, rules are made to be broken, especially in photography. And, you know, sometimes you do want a lower shutter speed if you want a little bit of blur and a little bit of motion in it. Now, this image right here, this is a fashion image that I did a few months back, and I actually made a conscious creative choice to shoot this at 1 60th of a second. Um, I didn't want this photo to be tack sharp because I had the model turning back towards me and looking in a pose, and I felt like if it was sharp all the way through, it wouldn't convey that sense of motion in the photograph. So I wanted a little imperfection because I think sometimes that imperfections really give life to an image. So that's kind of how you can use your shutter speed creatively. Now obviously if you're shooting with strobes, there's a lot different rules that apply to shutter speeds, but this is a beginner kind of course, so let's leave it at that. Leave it at a hundred, one over 200th if you're going to be shooting handheld. If you want to shoot some sports, try starting at one 500th and then move around a little from there. So setting number two, your f-stop, also known as your aperture. This is actually the setting that allows you to create a more blurry background or a sharper background. And I also think that this is one of the settings that probably confuses people the most when they first switch over to manual mode. So I'll try to explain it as simply as I can. The smaller the f-stop, so if your camera and your lens go down to f2.8 or maybe some of them are f4, that's gonna let in the most light so you wanna use that setting in the darkest situation. So nighttime photography, indoor, restaurants, bars, anything where there's not a lot of light in your scene, you're gonna to wanna to use a lower f-stop. Now what that's also going to do is create a blurry background. Now on the opposite end of things, the higher the f-stop, the sharper the photo is gonna be from front to back. So this is one of those things that if you know what you want your image to look like, you need to make sure your f-stop is adjusted correctly before you start shooting, because that's really going to affect the overall look and the style of the photograph that you're going for. Setting number three is your ISO. And ISO, I don't know what ISO stands for, hold on. All right, cool, I got it. ISO stands for the International Organization of Standardization. That doesn't make any sense or help you at all. Essentially what you need to know about ISO is that it's the sensitivity of your camera sensor. So if you set it to your lowest ISO setting, it's gonna be at usually 100 on most cameras. Some of them go down to 50 now. But your lowest setting is gonna be the least sensitive for your sensor, and the highest setting is gonna be the highest sensitivity. So if you are in a dark room or if you're shooting at night, you're generally speaking going to be at a higher ISO setting. Now what it's gonna do is gonna increase the sensitivity of that camera, and, but it's also gonna increase the amount of noise and grain and it's gonna degrade the quality of the image the higher your ISO is. And now on the opposite end of things, the lower the ISO you have, generally the better quality of image you're gonna have. So most professional photographers are really trying to shoot the lowest possible ISO they can for their camera. It's just gonna create the best results. Now, most cameras these days, 
not this Canon 5D Mark II here. I'm just using it as a prop because I'm shooting my good cameras. Most cameras these days can really go up to 25,000 ISO. So from 100 to 25,000. Now your re general rule of thumb, you're not really gonna wanna go, um, whoa. General rule of thumb, you're not really gonna wanna go above two to 4,000 ISO. You're gonna start to see some of that noise. So keep that in mind. So once you have your shutter speed set, your f-stop set, you go ahead and set your ISO and you adjust it up to where you need a properly exposed image. So that's it for exposure. It's just those three things that actually make the image lighter or darker or blurrier in the background or sharper in the background. The last thing I wanna talk about is a little bit of a bonus tip. It's called white balance. Now, if you're in auto mode on your camera, your camera's gonna be set to what's called AWB. It's auto white balance. And the camera's just gonna pick up the scene and figure out what colors it thinks it needs to be, but isn't that creative? And you know, sometimes you wanna pop in there and maybe you don't want perfect color. Maybe you want a little bit bluer of a scene or greener of a scene. Uh, you can do that in your white balance settings. Now, most cameras these days have custom white balance settings where you can adjust what you want, or you can just go over your standard stuff like your shadow. It's gonna get a color temperature, generally works with shadows. You can get your sunlight, your full day sunlight shots. You can adjust it to that. Um, if you wanna just leave an auto white balance, that's fine. You can always go back into a Lightroom or a photo editing software and change your color balance later. So here's a little example of a photograph that actually is not the correct white balance but I decided to change the white balance to get a more creative look to the image that I thought was a little bit more interesting than just having perfectly colored skin on this. It's a method that you see a lot in movies and cinema. They, if you see a movie that's tinted blue or green, they're generally trying to emote a feeling of uneasiness or drama or something a little bit scarier. And if you're seeing an image that's perfectly color correct and perfectly white balanced, and the skin looks great and it's really warm and sunny, they're generally trying to convey uh, a feeling of happiness and comfortableness. But you can do the same thing in photography. The color is a really important part of telling your story and getting your image across and the feeling that you had in that location. So mess around with white balance. If you're not really feeling comfortable with it, set it to auto white balance and go ahead and make those adjustments in Lightroom. So we're gonna jump right into a little live demo here. I'm gonna photograph an object for you and I'm gonna show you these steps one by one on how I do them and how I go back and adjust them to make sure that the overall exposure is looking good and the overall color is looking good. So let's dive right into that, yeah? All right, cool guys. So I'm gonna show you how this works with a really, really simple setup. Um, we got our subject here, Teddy from Bob's Burger for you fans. He's just gonna be our subject right here on the table. And uh, I'm shooting here with a Sony a7R uh, with a 50 millimeter lens. My newer cameras we're using to film this YouTube episode, so it looks a lot better. But this is a pretty run of the mill mirrorless camera that you're gonna see with basically the same settings as almost any other major camera brand out there. So it's a good one to use for this. And we're gonna be using a 50 millimeter general lens for almost any kind of photography. So it's gonna be good for that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're just gonna run through those steps that I showed you at the first part of this video, okay? So I'm technically going to have the camera here sitting down. So really my shutter speed could be almost anything I want it to be. However, let's keep it at the 200th just for example purposes and pretend I'm hand holding this. I'm not because uh, I wanna be able to see up top there in the overhead view so you guys can see, so bear with me. Um, so first step is we're actually just gonna take it off of auto mode here. We have it in auto mode right now. I'm gonna switch that switch over to manual. On the Sony today has a manual dial, it's an M on it. You're gonna to wanna to do that one. Uh, on some other cameras, it might be in the menu that you actually need to change it over. But either which way, change it over to M right now. Um, right now we're at 1 7.1 7 f-stop and a 250 ISO which is producing no image. It's not, there's not enough light coming in the camera. So what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna go ahead and change that to 1 200th, and that's our standard starting shutter speed for almost any kind of natural light portrait like we're doing right now. And then what you're gonna see, and you're gonna see it's a little bit dark. It's still, you still can't see the image through here. Nothing's happening. So I'm gonna shoot at a lower f-stop because I want the background to be just about the subject, Teddy here, and not the computer and the cameras behind him that are filming me. So I'm gonna change that to an F.2, or F2.0, excuse me. Um, cool, this image is still a little bit dark as you can see. Uh, let me take a snapshot so you can see where we're at. 
There we are, still looking a little bit dark, a little bit muddy. So here's where we get to our ISO. We need to increase the sensitivity of our sensor now that we have our shutter speed locked in and our f-stop locked in. Now, so I'm just gonna increase that ISO. And as you can see, it's increasing just a little bit increments there as we go up. Now this is actually pretty good. We actually have a bit of window light coming in through here where I only need to have the ISO set at 640. So this is actually gonna work. This camera can handle up to about 2000 before you start to see any real image degradation. So we're at 640 here. I'm gonna take that photo. Great, we have a pretty nice looking exposure and that works. Um, so now let's look at the uh, white balance, balance, the last step here. I'm just gonna go into the white balance menu and you can see as it changes here from cloudy to incandescent to warm to cool white and also has all these other custom settings and filters you can do and you can set it up your own way. I actually kind of like just auto right now. I think it's looking pretty good. We could also choose daylight if we wanted. It has a nice warm tone to it or we can go ahead and go with shade. But I think auto is looking probably the most balanced from front to back. So we're gonna go ahead and just take that. Again, same image, looks pretty good. Um, now, what if we wanted to uh, change our f-stop? What if we didn't like how much blur was in this photo right now? We wanted to see a little bit more of the foreground and a little bit more of the background and just wasn't so soft looking. So I'm just gonna increase that f-stop. Now, what you'll notice is, and the next standard increment is usually 5.6, what you're gonna notice is that it went pretty dark. So what we're either gonna have to do is adjust our shutter speed or we're gonna have to adjust our ISO. Now, I'm already at 1 200th of a second, which is kind of my minimum for handhold, but like like I said, let's break the rule a little bit. Let's, let's put it down to 125, and I just make sure the camera's really, really steady when I do this. And it's still looking a little bit dark to me, so there's, let me show you what it looks like at 125, 5.6. Sharp, but dark. So we're gonna have to, if we wanna keep that f-stop at 5.6 and our shutter speed at 125th, uh, we're gonna have to change that ISO or we're gonna have to add more light. Now, being that I don't have any lights here right now and we're just using window light, we're kind of stuck. So we need to just use the ISO to do this, even though it's going to degrade the image the higher we go. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this up and it's looking like we're right about 2000. And this is kind of the barrier that I have set for myself for this camera model, because after that, it starts to go a little bit. Um, hence, buying new cameras every few years, the technology gets a little bit better with low light. This camera can actually handle it though. So we're at 2000 right now at 5.6. I'm gonna take that photo. Now, if you notice the difference between the image at f5.6 and the image at f.2, there's a lot more of the background sharp. There's a lot more of it showing. You can actually see there's a camera back there, unlike when we're shooting over at f2.0. Cool guys, so I hope you learned something. I know this is a very, very basic tutorial, but hopefully it helped. Uh, show you some of the tools that professionals like myself use and how we set up our cameras for specific shots and to get very specific looks in our images. Um, in the future, I'm gonna be doing more advanced lighting tutorials, um, lighting tutorials with natural light and with strobes. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button on this. Um, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions, uh, if I didn't answer anything for you very clearly. Leave a comment, happy to respond, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I will talk to you later.